Hello, friends. This is Tim Krause, creator of Omen. And I would like to thank you personally for enjoying our first season. From writing the script in early 2019 to putting the finishing touches on the finale in late 2021, this project has been the most challenging and personal creative endeavor I've ever undertaken. And I am very grateful to have been able to share it with you. I'd like to share a little about the future of Omen, but before that, I've got a deleted scene to share with you. Well, not deleted, really. You see, in episode 102, during the opening scene, listeners got their first glimpse of Minister Asema Malik, performed to perfection by Cena Breyer, as she gave a very impassioned political speech to the People's Council. Most of this fully scripted speech was used as set dressing over which our main characters delivered exposition. Sharp-eared listeners might have been able to pick out a phrase or two in the background, but now I present to you Malik's speech in its entirety, uncut and unobstructed. Order, order! The council recognizes Mercantile District Representative Minister Asema Malik. The floor is yours, Minister. Thank you, Ambrose. Ladies and gentlemen of the council, my compatriots, my colleagues, my dear friends. Yesterday we received disturbing news from Steel Falcon Runners. If it is indeed true that Galt has sanctioned or is in any way involved with these attacks, then it is only a matter of time before the lives of Andoran citizens are placed in danger. Our caravans in Druma have suffered dozens of guerrilla attacks this year alone. Thousands of gold worth of material and labor have already been destroyed or sabotaged. I fear it won't be long before whatever message these people are trying to send escalates to military conflict. During these times of civil unrest, it is Andoran's responsibility, both to her citizens at home and to her allies abroad, to demonstrate that this great nation is capable of defending her lands, her people, and the lofty ideals for which she stands. On behalf of our foreign interests, I plan to submit a formal request of the Council to call in all of Andoran's remaining naval fleets to help defend the lines from this growing threat. Order! Order! These attacks are not the trifling matter we once thought. Our citizens are dying. This is an act of war. We now must face the grim truth of the matter. Our efforts to unify Avistan have been condemned by those who see our independence as a threat. And now, on the brink of realizing an era of freedom and prosperity, a future of which our forebears could only dream, our young nation is quickly running out of options. We cannot, in good faith, request additional aid from our allies in the North. Relations with High Prophet Keldor are strained at best. Word of the attacks has been sent to High Helm, though it would be naive to expect further support from the Five Kings Mountains. Their mining and excavation contributions to the rail, as well as our utilization of their chief stone transmuters, has already incurred a sizable debt to the Andaman Reserve. The constant setbacks and unforeseen costs incurred by these attacks are beginning to shake our neighbors' confidence, not just in the Platinum Line project, but in the resolve and integrity of our country and our people. We are truly on our own, my friends. But this is not a fact to despair, nor is it an indicator of weakness. No, this is a reminder of our strength. A reminder that Andrin need not look further than her own leaders, her own people, when under the threat of tyranny. 
It was a mere 50 years ago that Andoran gave the inner sea its first taste of the fruits of oppression. The power inherent in ordinary men and women and the inevitable progression of democracy. And if the people's revolt has taught us anything, it is that the inner sea is ripe for change. That's right. The inner sea is changing, my friends. And we are that change. We gladly devote our lives to building bridges and forging alliances that would bring tears of pride to the eyes of our forefathers. Their dream has made us strong. Why should we turn to others for help? We are the nation on which all other free peoples hang their hopes. It is Andorin to whom our neighbors look for inspiration, for protection, and as an example of what a true democracy can accomplish. In a week's time, in full witness of our entire assembly of elected peers, I will call for an official vote to summon our reserve naval forces. And, more importantly, I will move to sanction what the Steel Falcons are trained to do best, the trampling of oppression wherever it rears its ugly head, not as an act of aggression or as a display of power, but as a promise fulfilled to those who walked this road before us. In the days leading to our next session of Congress, I implore you all to remember what your families fought and died for, and I encourage you to ask both yourselves and your fellow representatives this simple question. What if not this campaign of unity and independence should Andoran be willing to fight for? Thank you. Deliberation will reconvene in an hour's time. Council is dismissed. See now why I couldn't just leave this little gem hiding in the background? And despite the excellent performances by both Cena Breyer and Sam Isley, I figured there were a bit too many proper nouns to keep track of so early in season one. But now that we know more about Malik's character and the setting of Omen, this speech suddenly becomes a lot more relevant to future plot lines. Speaking of which, we are absolutely planning to create a second season of Omen. Our hero's adventure continues in Opara, capital city of the nation of Taldor, and even into lands beyond. I already have plans to introduce a bunch of new characters, some of which were mentioned in Season 1, and many of our Season 1 cast and crew will be returning. But before we get started with Season 2 of Omen, I'm very excited to begin work on a series of short bonus episodes. These mini-episodes will be free to Omen patrons, and also available as a one-time purchase on omencast.com. We're also planning to release hours of cast table reads, deleted script drafts, and the complete Omen soundtrack by Matt Lee to our patrons. So if you love what we do and want to help us out, please consider supporting Omen by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash omenpodcast. Omen is an independent production, which means we aren't allied with a network and we do not receive funding beyond our Patreon and merchandise sales. This doesn't make indie shows better or worse than larger productions, but it definitely makes podcasting more of a challenge. It also makes everything take more time to produce, as, for now anyways, I'm tackling all of the writing, casting, directing, and sound design myself. All of this is to say that, yes, Season 2 is in production and there will be a lot of Omen content and updates in the meantime. Hopefully it will be quicker this time around, but it's still going to take time. And we really appreciate your patience and encouragement while we go to work. You can follow us on Twitter at Omen Podcast for more up-to-date news about Omen. But for now, my friends, I just wanted to take this time to thank you for your enthusiasm and love. It means the world to me. Keep your eyes to the horizon for Omen Season 2, and until next we meet, fair winds and following seas.